When someone asks, where do you worship? See, they often expect a response that is tied to a physical location, that is a church or a building. But you see, this question reveals a deeper issue. The belief that worship is confined to what happens within the four walls of a building. Now, this mindset reduces worship to an event or ritual rather than the all-encompassing, life-changing relationship with God that is meant to be. Jesus confronted this in his conversation with the Samaritan woman at the well, and she asked where the proper place to worship was, on the mountain, in Samaria, or, or in Jerusalem. Now Jesus replied, and I quote, A time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. True worshippers will worship the Father in the Spirit and in truth." Unquote. Worship, Jesus taught, isn't about a location. It is about the condition of our hearts and the authenticity of our connection with God. When we confine worship into a building, it, number one, compartmentalizes faith. See, when, when, when worship is tied to a building or a, or a weekly event, it becomes something people do once a week, fostering hollow religion. Their faith is limited to one morning in, and with the rest of the life or the day disconnected from God. And number two, it fosters passivity, viewing worship as a observable activity with congregants as spectators rather than active participants. They come to, to observe people singing and people talking and doing sermons and worship then becomes a performance for them. And also it misrepresents God's presence. Restricting worship to a location implies that God is confined to that space. Yet scripture says, I quote, the Most High does not live in houses made by human hands, unquote. Acts 7, 48. God is everywhere, and we can encounter Him anywhere. So true worship is therefore a lifestyle. Romans 12, 1 urges, I quote, Offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship, unquote. It's about daily surrender to God. In other words, letting His Spirit guide our actions, our words and thoughts at work, in relationships, and certainly in private moments. Some of the Bible's most profound acts of worship happen outside physical structures. For example, Abraham worshipped by trusting God and offering Isaac, Genesis 22. And David he, King David, he worshipped in the wilderness, singing praises while fleeing from Saul, Psalms 68. Paul and Silas worshipped in the prison, singing hymns to God, Acts 16.25. See, their worship was rooted in their relationship and connection with God, not a specific location. God desires worship that permeates every part of our lives, not just a few hours in a specific place. As 1 Corinthians 10, 31 says, I quote, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God, unquote. So if the physical location is the only place we worship, we miss the heart of true worship. Let us stop confining worship to a building and live it out daily instead. Worship isn't an event. It is an encounter with the living God available anytime, anywhere. So there is no need to fuss over, over whether you attend a building or church. Fuss over whether you are connected with God and building a relationship with God. Amen.